Welcome to Brazil Antiques Interviews, where we get to know the people behind and in front of the creative industries. We're your hosts, music web designer Ross Barber Smith from Scotland, owner of Electric Kiwi, where we create awesome custom websites for bands, artists, and musicians. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook as Electric Kiwi. Yes, and I'm singer songwriter and multi instrumentalist Marcy Novelli from Canada, a man who wears many hats, literally and figuratively. When I'm not releasing music under my own name or my side project, Midnight Soundtrack, I'm producing and mixing records for other artists. Speaking of which, if you'd like me to produce or mix your next song or album, get in touch. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon, which are all my name, Marcio Novelli. And speaking of Patreon, we have made some significant updates to ours, um, and we invite you to become an official patron of the show to help things going and growing. Yes, perks include early access to content, of course, sponsored ads at the start and end of our shows, as well as your chance to co-host an episode along your two favorite co-hosts. Maybe? Maybe not? I don't know. Maybe? Yeah, And uh, for anyone who's <laughs> unsure of who those two favorite co-hosts are, us. <laughs> we hope... Well, we hope that it's us. I wouldn't get ahead of ourselves, no, but hopefully. Okay. As long it's as it's us. in our heads, it's all good. As long as we, yeah, we're our own favorite co-host, right? <laughs> Speak for yourself. Um, <laughs> You're my favorite co-host, Ross. How's that? Oh, thanks. Yeah, anyway, yeah. moving on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we also have uh, Bridget Atlantic shirts. I mean, yes. if, if you've watched any more than one episode, then you've probably seen that we have these shirts available, and they're available in seven different colors. Uh, there's a link to get them in our show notes, so go and get them. And use the coupon code BTA Rocks to get ten percent off your purchase. As our little way of saying thank you. Yes, and lastly, I recently released my brand new acoustic EP, The Reimagining Volume One, and you can listen to it anywhere you like to download or stream music. So um, I ask you to do that, and I encourage you to share it freely and spread the love. Yeah, and check me out. And it's been getting a lot of love on Facebook and Twitter lately. Yes, it has. Uh, deservedly so. Thank you. That's my compliment uh, I know. of the day. Out of the way. I said, I said you're my favorite co-host, made you feel uncomfortable, you compliment my music. It did not make me feel uncomfortable, it made me feel loved, so thank you. You're welcome. We're too nice on this show sometimes. Uh, well. It's not as entertaining, we've got to pull some Howard Stern stuff on here or something. Maybe, maybe. Maybe not. Anyway, joining us this week is Terry McBride, the CEO of the Network Music Group, which includes network productions, network management... Network One and Artworks. Founded in his apartment in 1984, Network has corporate offices in Vancouver, Boston, LA, Nashville, New York, Hamburg, and London. And that's a lot of places. Craziness. Network's management roster includes artists such as Fun, Guster, The Stereophonics, and Alexi Murdoch. Since 1984, Network Productions has released over 500 albums and sold only, you know, 150 million copies worldwide. We're excited to hear more about Terry's career so far and the advice he'd offer to musicians and music industry professionals. I am very excited to welcome Terry to the show. Hey man, how's it going? Hi, good, thank you. We, we are excited to chat with you today. So we want to just get awkward right off the bat and learn a bit more about sure. you. So tell us three things about yourself that everyone should know. Uh, let's see, I love my family, I love music, and I love yoga. That was the fastest three things we've ever had on the yeah. show you are an efficient that was so fast. you know that, I, like i press my mute button <laughs> so to get to hear the answer and then oh my gosh. i wasn't quick enough to unmute myself because i wasn't prepared for that speed so i mean i'm halfway through my coffee so beware i, I was yeah, gonna say I as well i was gonna say the coffee maybe had something to do with <laughs> we're, it we're all sporting yeah. some coffee today you know what i, yeah. I when, re when reading that bio i'm like how has he done all this that's why you're efficient you don't second mm -hmm. guess yourself and you just speak your mind and you do it is that is that the, the the secret here it is very rare to get an email from me that's more than eight to ten words really yeah so i should never now email Mark, you with like three different questions it just won't work uh you just you just might get a yes no yes oh, okay that works that's efficient or a fine okay i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> which is which is a long answer for me i don't think so <laughs> so yeah I, I it will be rapid fire um in today's music industry um i'd be interested to hear from your perspective what you think are the keys to a successful career besides short how, emails <laughs> yeah, besides short emails and how does today's industry compare to the music business when you first started um it's actually really really similar to when mark and i started back 30 odd years ago because we're back to having the, the ability for the middle class artists to be successful without having to sort of prostitute themselves. So I would say um, what's really, really key today is authentic. You no longer have to um, 
go two or 200 shows a year. You no longer need to have radio, you know, play to have success. There's an ability now in a sort of flat world type of situation, which is where we sit, to have your music listened to, loved, liked, shared, and actually be able to make a living from your intellectual property. So that's very, very similar to, I would say, the 80s, the 80s and 90s. And would you say that the authentic side of things, is that, does that come from more than just the music? Is that also about how, you know, artists interact with their fans on, on social media, for example, and really kind of showcasing who they are as people as well as musicians? I don't think you can separate the two. Mm. And if you basically can, then I would say it's not authentic. I 100% agree. Yeah, I, I think that's what's so important nowadays, too. And I, I do tell other artists, we've mentioned this on the show before, don't have like, you can have a stage persona. Sure, that happens. A different part of you comes out. Mm -hmm. But you got to, people want to relate to you now, I think, as a person. I, I mean, okay, so th think about how this works. What is a song? Is, is a song lyrics, melody, chords? Um, I would say no. Is a song a copyright? No. A song's an emotion. And you can have a million people loving that same emotion, but having a different emotional attachment to it. That is the power of music. So songs are emotions. So if you're not authentic, then how can the emotion be authentic? And how can people really relate to it? Absolutely. So that's, that's, that's kind of where I, that's, that's where we come from. And mm -hmm. that, and we, we realize that we're in the business of monetizing emotions. Yeah, but that's beautiful to hear, especially it's someone at, at your level of success, because I guess like, I don't know, people get the wrong perception of people in the major industries. You know, I remember I worked with a producer a few years back. His name's Julius Buddy. And I remember this is about 10 years ago and, and or nearing that. And uh, I remember being really naive thinking like, oh, you know, I only want to be in an indie label because those are like where all the good people are. And he looked at me, he's like, you know, there are good and bad people at all levels, Marcio. Really, you can have terrible yeah. people at indie level, you know? So that really kind of changed my perspective. And it's really about the people behind it. Yeah. It, and there are great, you know, major label people. But I mean, if you want to be on a major label, then it's because the value that they can add to your music aligns with where your interests are. Oh, 100%. It's really that simple. 100%. Well, yeah. you know, uh, another question kind of about today's industry, you know, there are common mistakes that I think artists make, you know, do you notice some of these, uh, especially when they approach labels or management, you know, uh, besides ob the obvious one, they're not just, just not ready. You know, um, could you maybe share some of the common mistakes as well as any common uh, misconceptions artists have um, and you can maybe bust them for us? Um, you know, artists that don't know where they're going, that haven't um, visualized their own dream, haven't thought of a strategy of how to get there and are relying upon others to do it for them, will not be, will not be successful. You know, um, it, it's, it's a label's job is to add value to surround the artist with people who love, who love that music, who have a passion for that music and want to authentically spread that music. Um, but they need to understand where the artist wants to get to. And that's, I have those conversations really, really early on. One, I have to love the music. Two, I have to like the artist. And three, I have to make sure that their management is not an asshole. And, and that really, really frankly, if I can't check those three boxes, the composition does not move forward. I don't, you know, talk about, are you, you know, going to play live 200, you know, 200 days of the year. I couldn't care less, frankly. Hmm. If you play live, that creates an opportunity. Yeah. I mean, I think artists have, have to realize this is their career, not my career, yeah. not my company's career. It's their career. So if they don't know where they want to go, then we can't figure out whether we can add value and help them get there. So, I mean, artists that kind of um, say, well, I'm like only about the music. I'm only in, I'm only into that. Oh, shit. This is your career. Where do you want to get to? Mm -hmm. Is that real? Is that realistic? And those are the conversations you have very, very early. Um, whether they're, you know, ready for it or not, chances are, if I'm talking to them, it's because I fell in love with the music. So from my point of view, part of it's ready enough of it's ready for me to have that conversation mm. and i and, and if i think the last eight months nine months i probably have signed 20 artists wow 
That's a lot. That's actually a lot more than I. It than is, I yeah. That's surprising to me. Well, because is that typical? No, it's um. We really believe that there's going to be a resurgence in the in the middle class artist, mm-hmm. and it's an artist that's <clears throat> not necessarily dependent on playing live, not necessarily dependent upon a radio, just very dependent upon having a bunch of passionate people around them. Yeah, getting the music out there and doing all of the right things. Yeah, and I mean, you know. Chances are I'm going to sign another 10, 15 over, over like the next year. Yeah, there was this experience I had, uh, just to give a little anecdote, this is a few years back. Uh, there's a master engineer, Chris Athens, which we ended up having on the show. And a few years back, he mastered one of my EPs, and I had the opportunity to, to sit down and chat with him. And I remember I had really built a great following for myself, but that in my eyes, that was like, okay, that's great, but I need to get, I need to get a label, I need to get this behind me. And I remember him telling me, that all doesn't matter. Those fans, that's all that matters. Right, and this mm-hmm. is way beha- this is way before. I mean, this is quite a few years ago before like it actually really does not matter now as much. You know what I mean? In the sense of uh, you know what's the most important is building that following of people that are passionate about what you're doing, and then everything else follows if it's the right fit. You know, so that really kind of blew my mind in a sense, and really changed where my direction went. Where was which was, you know, and I share this because I think that anyone listening to this right now needs to realize that too. Just focus on making great music and caring about the people who care about what you do. And everything else will slowly follow, you know? Yep. And I, I guess I'm saying that and asking you if you agree with that. Yes. You know? Yeah. I mean, there's, uh, you can, I can basically sort through whether I want to make an offer or not mm-hmm. with inside the first phone conversation. Oh, wow. That's all really interesting. Well, yeah. I mean, a lot, a, a lot of this is intuitive anyways. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And this kind of leads, I, I, I think you've kind of, answered my next question already a little bit yeah uh maybe that's the intuition maybe you knew this is coming so you always thought, I'm gonna, one step ahead I'm gonna of us i'm gonna answer this i don't know did you guys send me any questions because if you if you did i didn't bother to look no at we didn't we never do that tell yeah. never well, there do you never <laughs> <laughs> um, i was gonna ask if there is a specific set of criteria when you are looking for an artist that you want to manage or you want to sign um i think you've, you've kind of answered that you know um but is there anything i guess is there well, I, I'm going well, to jump in here. Is it, it, it's, actually, it's actually different because signing at the record label, signing at the publishing, and signing at management mm-hmm. are three different, completely three completely different looks. For sure. Um, label, it has to fit the musical palette of our company because that way I know that we can add value to it. So mm. would, um, would the label ever sign a heavy metal band? No. Publishing might. Mm. If publishing heard the music and thought there's a really good laneway for like film and TV or possibly collaborations with other artists, Mm -hmm. that's a whole other set of ears. Management, a completely different set of ears because a manager, even a top line manager can maybe manage at most five artists. So that's a, and it's, you really get into the artist's lives. So that's a completely different relationship on the, you know, label side, I don't get into their lives. Hmm. We talk creatively about music. Mm-hmm. So again, three, three different buckets, three completely different conversations mm-hmm. and three different approaches to it. So when you're considering an artist then, is that, uh, it's, it's just, just come down to instinct where you feel like I really want to work with this artist, but this is where they fit. Yeah. Cool. Knowing where, <laughs> knowing where we can add value. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, management's very, very different. Yeah. You know, management, we work with both indies and also we're, you know, you know, we, you know, we work with major labels. Based on um, what, what that artist needs, right? Where the value can be placed. Yeah. Yeah. Based that's, on that's the great. right partnerships to further that, further that career along. So that's so, you know, that's really beautiful for me to hear that you, it really, it really seems that you just put the artist first. You know, it's not about how can this benefit my company. You know, it's how can what I do benefit this artist and grow together if the artist succeeds we do that's beautiful i mean through you know 30 odd years of doing this there's (laughs) we really do seriously look there's 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 been times where you know mark and i would hear this music go we can make a lot of money you know from this and we release it and it's stiffed huh then oh oh there's a great little bluegrass band love this song yeah we should just release it you know and then 10 years later it sold a million copies wow called wagon wheel Uh you know so Stick with what you love. Yeah. 
You know, it's so funny you say this too, because it's we've done, I guess, nearing 130 interviews on the show now, Bridging 19, in the last two and a half years. And the common thread, the common thread is always following that gut feeling mm-hmm. and knowing an opportunity when it's there. Because, you know, it, half of success is just following that gut feeling and, and, and jumping on an opportunity yeah. if it's the right feeling, but, uh, coupled with that gut feeling. And particularly yeah. people in your position that we've had on this show, like in a similar position as you, really strongly say that they're very instinctive and follow that gut feeling and just know right away if this is the right fit or not. You know, because it, Ross and I have had experience before when we don't follow that gut feeling, we always regret it, you know, but when we follow that gut feeling, it's like, even if it doesn't work out, at least you only have yourself to blame, you know, you know that. So, you well, know, it actually, it actually did work out. You just had a lesson to learn from it. Oh, wow. Yes. 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 <laughs> you had a different, <laughs> pers- you had a different perspective to see. There was yeah. nothing wrong with what happened. Mm-hmm. Um, let's have a little fun though. Uh, okay. You ready for 20 questions? Sure. All right, let's do this. I already know the answer to this one. We all can answer. Coffee or tea? Coffee. (laughs) Well, actually, coffee in the morning, tea in the afternoon. Yes, same. Uh, That's guys. Yeah, that's kind of the pattern I've been doing. Green. It's green tea in the afternoon. I have one coffee. That's only because I have two young, two young kids, so I don't get to sleep through the night. Meat or veggies? Oh, veggie. I've been a a vegetarian for twenty five years. Twitter or Facebook? Neither. Do you have another option? I use both, but my like Twitter feed goes, you know, goes uh, to my Facebook. I only use my Facebook to track down artists. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. you listen if to I that find, If I, if I <laughs> find something I love, I go searching for them. And usually I can contact them through messaging on Facebook. Indie or major? Neither, both. Yoga Either or? Or yogurt? No, yoga. Vancouver Same. or Los Angeles? Ah, uh, Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> Education or experience? Experience. Marvel or DC? Mm, DC. Hockey or football? Soccer. <laughs> I'm all, I only said soccer because football, you would think, is the right football. Or you would think it's the right football. I know. Football. Talent or attitude? Talent. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Canada or Scotland? Ireland. <laughs> I like where you're going with this. I do like this too. <laughs> Lennon or McCartney? Mm. Ringo. <laughs> I knew that you were going to do that. <laughs> Style or substance? Oh, substance. Mm. Batman or Superman? Ah, Superman. I know the answer to this. Mac or PC? Oh, Mac. I knew you were. How can you even think differently? (laughs) (laughs) Michael Jackson Uh or Michael Bolton? Oh, Michael Jackson. Not even a choice in that one. (laughs) I'm sorry, Bolton. I'm sorry, the Bolt, if you're listening. Sorry about that. No, I mean, I'm, you know, Michael, Michael Bolton has a whole style that soccer moms get. I'm not a soccer mom. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not a soccer mom either, but Ross, the Bolt's got a place in my heart. He writes writes good songs, but Michael Jackson was a, he was the the man. He was a, he was a, he was, he just changed things. Hmm. Did you ever have an opportunity to meet Michael Jackson? No. Um, Celine Dion or Marilyn Manson? either really would you why no um you know what celine's got the most amazing voice ever. Mm-hmm. um marilyn had uh, had a moment in a, a, like moment in time but it had mm-hmm. more to do with show and antics than, than what it did the actual music mm. so when it really comes down to sort of music celine doesn't really write her own stuff no. and, and you know marilyn's more about the show and the effect versus the music so i more can't really re- relate to either I feel like Marilyn Manson definitely, I'd put him under like performing artists or a performance yeah. art. Whale or Kale? Kale. Bette Midler or The Riddler? They rhyme, Terry. That, that's really all it is. Bette Midler. Some people Bette have suggested Midler. they're one and the same. Could no. be. You know, no? No. No. Terry said <laughs> no. that record. No. Midler. <laughs> no, nope, they're definitely not the same, guys. No. Nope. And I your final question. The letters are too far apart, guys. <laughs> <laughs> your final question feel free to suggest a third answer for this. <laughs> Ross or Marcio? Oh. I don't know. I mean... We need some sort of music that 
that, that Scots have the best accent, but Marcel, you know, does live in Hamilton, which, you know, shows that he's really has to be committed to what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Which I am. Um, hmm. I don't know. I'm kind of split on this one. Well, uh, let me, let me make a point of saying that my aunt Carla, um, my own aunt Carla <laughs> oh, picks Ross. Um, so I'm glad you didn't pick someone because right now I, I need at least to not have Ross get picked for a couple of times. Well, I also don't know you well enough know, to right? pick one over, you know, one over, you know, one over the other. Right. I well, know. Well, Terry, you know, this question is supposed to be a bit of a trick question. Yeah. But surprising number of our guests do answer it. Yeah. Like, thinking that we are expecting them to have been able to pick between the two of us in the space of half an hour. And we're glad that you didn't. Mm-hmm. We're glad that yeah. you, you didn't because now it's not awkward. <laughs> <laughs> it feels a lot better right now. I do want to ask you for a bit of advice though before we wrap up today. Um, sure. Particularly for artists who are looking for a label or management, uh, what advice would you offer them really quickly? You know, what makes an artist quote unquote ready or suitable for a deal on any three spectrums or buckets that you were talking about? I know it's very specific for each, but uh, just- You know what? It, it, you know. For one, you got to be authentic. You got to know nice. who you are. You've got to have a dream. And you have to be able to communicate what that is. If it's sex, drugs, and rock and roll, I have no interest. If it's to make this world a better place, now you have me listening. Hmm. Um, Lyrics. You know, are those lyrics going to help people get through hard times? Or or is it just a party time? If it's a Hmm. party time, I have, you know, sort of no interest with that. Um, Intellect. Intellect. Um, Smart people creative people and also people that um, are just really, really honest and that you can be honest with them and they take it as the point of view of one person. This sounds like what I preach on the show all the time, Russ. Yeah, it, it kind of does. You are the perfect guest to have on the show right now. It's <laughs> what we preach all the time is honest, well, it's, you know, it's, being genuine and, and that's it. You know, management's, ma- you know, management can be really, really difficult and, you know, um, I've, you know, managed some of the biggest artists in the world. And sometimes the only honest person in, you know, in the room is the, is the manager. If the manager can be honest and have that sort of relationship with the artist. And yeah. it's, it, it's usually the hardest place to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You ever have, is, I mean, are there any situations, I'm sure you can't mention any names, but are there any situations where you've had to be honest and the artist just could not handle it. And I'm sure you've had situations oh, yeah. like that. How do you handle a Absolutely. situation like that? You know what? Life is too short. And, um, if they can't handle it, then maybe we're not meant to work together. Hmm. Yeah. If they don't see the value in that and they see the value with the inside the posse that surrounds them, then mm-hmm. so be it. I mean, it's like, you know, <sighs> As I said, I, I manage artists for almost 25 years and then in mm-hmm. 2008 decided I no longer want to be a manager. Mm-hmm. So I went back to just leading the sort of company and managing the managers. And I, you know, still work with artists. I just, I just do it as part of a, you know, team, mm-hmm. usually as a sort of strategist or, or opening up certain, you know, certain doors. Sure, sure. Or, or, or helping those managers because over 30 odd years, you pretty much have seen just about everything that's humanly possible. So <laughs> for better you know, or for worse, usually, I'm sure. <laughs> so you know, usually it's like a couple of managers calling up, going, "Dad," I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> we have this situation," and then we should have talked, and, and then we like talk about it. That's cool. Nice. And yeah. looking back at your career, um, is there one thing you know now that you wish you knew when you first started? Something that may have helped you? Not really. I mean, if I think of the first ten years of network. You know, Mark and I had to work other jobs in order to sustain network. I mean, I was a pizza delivery guy. I worked at a nightclub. I worked in, in like a record store. I worked at a fish factory. I was a lifeguard. I was a barista for one day and got fired. Um, couldn't make the, I couldn't make the coffee. You can drink enough. it, but you couldn't make it. <laughs> well, because I wanted to make quality and they just wanted yeah. speed. Um, and so, you know, we, we would have been better off if we had been on welfare. Mm-hmm. But the bottom line is, is we were young enough that we could see exactly where we were going. And I always say, um, you know, it's not fun on a roller coaster when you're going up. It's only fun when you're coming down. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we've had a roller coaster ride and it's awesome. But those first 10 years, they were really, really tough. 
Mm-hmm. But, you know, we made it. Absolutely. And then some. So if I could have shrunk those 10 years into two, it would have been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. So if there's anyone out there that's looking to, you know, follow in your footsteps and, you know, at least to do what you've done, um, is there something that you can just tell them right now to, you know, maybe just keep in the back of their mind? Um, a good music manager or a good music executive understands the marketplace really, really well from an international point of view or, or what I call a flat world point of view. Um, because music can start in any, in, in any country. I mean, if I, if I, I think Passengers Let Her Go started in Netherlands, it took us 18 months to take it around the world. Um, Mike Posner's I Took a Pill in a Visa started in Finland. It, it you know, Shazammed in Russia. It took us 14 months to take it around the world. But we understood where to look and how to do it once we saw the initial reaction. So understand strategy, understand culture codes, um, really begin to understand the business that you're in and how you can add value and how you can add strategy. And it doesn't matter whether you're a publisher, a label, or a you know, manager, that skill set is tremendously valuable. Terry, what's the best place for people to connect with you online? I know, not Twitter. Would it be Facebook? Just, yeah, you can like send something there. I, I like hop on every like couple of days. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just terryatnetwork.com. And if someone wants to approach you about what they're doing, what's the best way for them to do that? We already know, keep the email ridiculously short. <laughs> yep. Um, what should and, they be? And, and um, if, it's, uh, if it's music, just, just, have, just have a SoundCloud. Don't, please don't send me um, MPEG-3s. I'll just delete them. Mm-hmm. Um, just, you know, give me a link and I'll, and I will go listen and then give me at least a week because obviously I get flooded with music. Yeah, sure. But it's just terryatnetwork.com and it's always been that same email. Uh, as for us, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, iTunes, and YouTube. Uh, don't forget to visit our website and pick up one of our sexy shirts. Sexy yeah, shirts. You know. Wow, well, we're gonna I mean, have to send I'm, one so to I'm saying the shirts are sexy. I'm not saying that the people wearing them are sexy. Oh, so well, I am. You know, don't get any ideas. <laughs> Uh, so yeah pick one of them up while you're there and as i mentioned at the beginning of this episode my brand new acoustic ep the reimagining volume one volume one not one is available (laughs) everywhere i'm also working on my second full-length solo album and you can be part of it at marcinvalley.com slash pledge follow me on twitter facebook instagram spotify and patreon which are all my name marcio novelli yeah, go follow him. And I am working on websites for various artists at the moment. You can check out my work at electrickiwi.co.uk. You'll find me on Twitter and Instagram as Electric Kiwi and on Facebook, Electric Kiwi Design. This episode was brought to you by the wonderful 30 Roses, a virtual assistant and consultant to musicians and other creatives, as well as Chris Keaton, Joe Centenary, Buck Naked Soap Company, Music Entrepreneur HQ, and Social Surge. All links are in the show notes, so please check them out because they keep this show alive. And if you'd like to uh, sponsor the show and help keep the show alive, visit uh, patreon.com slash bridge the Atlantic. We recently updated our rewards, which now include sponsorship at the start of the, the interviews, as well as an opportunity for you to co-host an episode. And I'm really excited to see what happens when, uh, when that happens. Yeah. Uh, make sure to subscribe on YouTube and iTunes so you don't miss any episodes. And please leave us a comment and let us know what you think of the show. Terry. What an honor, man. This has been really great chatting with you and it's very refreshing. It really is very refreshing. I hope this has changed um, some perceptions for people, what they think uh, on the major level. You know, it kind of all gets grouped together like it was for me several years ago until someone bursted that silly idea. Mm. Um, You know, it's very refreshing and it's very exciting to hear that you are attracted to being genuine and honest and, uh, you know, the the intellectual side and not party music, all that kind of stuff. Everything you said, man, I've just like got a big smile on my face and like that makes me so unbelievably happy. Like you have no idea. So thank you for coming on the show and chatting with us. You're welcome. You're welcome. And please come back sometime, okay? Ah, I will. <laughs>